Welcome to the Golf Kingdom. It's our 4th of July show and Independence Day. Yeah, in Independence Day, Declaration of Independence, Revolutionary War. Man, it would have been cool to be there. I would have been such a maverick. G-Wash, give me a second to get this thing going and we'll make some progress. Yes, we win. USA, USA, USA. Hang on a second, boys. Let me sign that. I got my Sharpie right here. Yeah, there you go, yeah. Consider that signed. Man, yeah, I would have been a maverick. And it's our independence show. So let's bring in, not a blueprint, we're gonna bring in our Independence Day Declaration of Independence parchment and talk about what we're gonna do in the Golf Kingdom. We're gonna start off with a trip to the Golf Kingdom simulator and then a build it segment followed by keep it simple Strano where I've got something simple to help your game. After that, we're gonna to go to the Golf Kingdom library and look at Tiger Woods' book and then visit with our guest, Mark Sweeney from Aimpoint Golf. Then it's a putting service announcement and as always, we're gonna close with a time to rise. Are you ready? It's the 4th of July. We're celebrating America here in the Golf Kingdom. Welcome to the number one golf variety show in the world, the Golf Kingdom. Are you ready to build your game? Here's your host, Rob Strano. All right, all right, all right. It's our 4th of July show. It's going to be epic, and we're going to start off in the golf simulator. Yes, if you're going to have an epic show, you got to start off hitting golf balls. So we're going to talk about the club that's the most hard to hit, but you all think it should be easy. It's the driver. It's the longest club. It's the one you swing the hardest, and you all think you should be really consistent with it. All the time I'm hearing players tell me I'm not very consistent with the driver. Well, you know what? Neither are the PGA Tour players. Dustin Johnson, for example, on average, if this is the center of the fairway, he can hit it 40 yards this way or 40 yards that way on average, and he's one of the best on the planet. The PGA Tour average miss off center is 32 yards right or 32 yards left for a 64-yard gap between their right and left miss. So for you to say you're not consistent, well, neither are PGA Tour players, and we're going to prove that point here on a really cool golf hole. Now here's the flyover. We are on the 18th hole at Harbor Town in Hilton Head, South Carolina. It's a beautiful par four. Calabogi Sound is up the left. And of course, the iconic lighthouse sits behind the green as it kind of hugs the harbor here. Now, that little sliver of land you saw, that's the fairway. It happens to be about 80 yards wide. Yeah, it's almost a football field wide. Now, we're gonna hit some shots here in the simulator. I'm gonna hit three drivers and we're gonna see just how consistent I can be. And I'm just gonna set up and swing hard and rip at him because that's what you do. And we're gonna see how consistent this rip hard swing is at hitting the fairway. So here we go. Here goes the first one. So I'm aiming right down the middle. I'm gonna give it my 135% rip city swing. Let's see where it goes. Oh man, I hit that hard. It's flying up the left side, kind of coming back to the middle. So right square in the middle of the fairway. Awesome, I like that one, guys. Right down the pipe. Okay, there's the first swing. Now here comes the second one. Let's see if I can hit it right down the middle just like that one. So I'm gonna give it my 130% swing. Nice wide stance, ball forward for the driver. Let's get after it and see where it goes. Oh, I hit that one pretty good. Let's see where it's going. It's going just up the right center, high and kind of short. Boy, that one didn't fly very good compared to the first one. So not very consistent compared to the first one, was it? Okay, so I've hit two drivers and I've gone at them as hard as I can. And I hit a good one in the middle and I hit kind of a little pop-up weak one. Now, here we go, third one. This will be the tiebreaker maybe. So once again, wide stance. I'm gonna really get after it because I've got a wide fairway so I feel like I can hit it in the fairway. Let's see what we get here, gang. Okay, I hit that one pretty good. Let's see what we got. That one's flying. It's kind of curving to the left side of the fairway. Oh, I carried the hazard. Okay, that got out there pretty good. So there you saw three different swings out of me. I got one in the middle. The next one was kind of a pop-up, and the next one was kind of up the left, or it was really fighting to carry the calabogie sound and get out on the left side of the fairway. So I'm in a 
just, uh, just a simulator here. I'm not at the golf course where the wind might be blowing or there might be a couple of skins on the line. I'm kind of in a controlled spot and I wasn't super consistent with the driver. So don't expect to be consistent. What you wanna be is predictable. You wanna know when you swing it, which way is it gonna go if it goes bad? That way you can aim into that pattern. Remember that next time you go play. Okay, let's get about building it. And I have something interesting that is a total optical illusion when it comes to building your setup and involves getting the club down on the ground perfectly square to your target line and perpendicular to where you wanna go. And involves how the club is built and how that kind of messes up what you look at when you get the club behind the ball. Now, if you have your buddies telling you, dude, where are you aiming that club? This might be the problem. So I'm gonna explain it and show you the proper way to get this right. And we're gonna take a funky little angle here and we're gonna use our big fish giant golf club so you can see it super clearly. Now, Bear's gonna come in and over my shoulder here. And we're gonna go right down to the ground. So check this out. So I've got the club down here and I've got it down to where it is perpendicular looking to my target line there. Now, a lot of players don't like the look of that because it looks like the toe is turned in and the heel is turned out when it's perpendicular. But the scoring lines on the club are all matching the shaft here on the ground, which is where I want to aim. I want to go this way. Here's where it gets messed up. The leading edge of the club right here doesn't line up with the inside edge of the hosel. See, it's out in front of it. There's a gap right there on the leading edge in the hosel. So players will try to make that line up straight and when they turn it, the face is open. You can see how the face is pointed that way. You wanna make it look like these scoring lines are aiming into the hosel like that. See how that looks like it's turned in? The lines are coming into the middle of the hosel. You can see it on the ruler here. They're coming in that way. Do that and the club will look correct when it's down there on the ground. Now, I'm gonna stand up, bear, come back up to me real quick. The last thing you gotta tell yourself is this. When that club is sitting like that and not like this, you gotta tell yourself this is correct. Do that and you might find up you stop missing those shots to the right because you're aiming this better. Okay, it's time for the kiss segment. Yes, keep it simple, Strano. Something super simple, fast to help your game. And this goes to a question I got as a tour player. In fact, all tour players, we get this question every time we do a kid's clinic. I don't care if there's 100 kids there, one kid's gonna ask this question. Why do you wear a glove? So here's the reason why, and it's pretty important. So we wear a glove on our lead hand, or some players wear them on both hands, to keep control of the club. The lead hand, these three fingers, we wanna make sure these stay strong in the club and it doesn't slip and slide around. If you have kind of slimy, sweaty hands and you mix it with your grip, the club will slide around. And you might have a problem when you swing kind of like this video here. If your hands are sweaty, wet, slimy, and you swing, you might have, whoa, that happened. That was a great club throw, man, it was awesome release. Look at that thing take off. Now in super slow-mo, watch it. Club comes loose, there it goes, whoosh, 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 it's flying. So key reason number one is, we want to have this club under control right here. Sliding around in your hands is a bad feeling when you're swinging 100 miles an hour with a stick trying to hit a ball on the ground. Now, if we're using this for full swing for control and to keep our hand in contact with the grip, when we chip, pitch, and putt, we don't need it because that's a feel shot and we're not worried about swinging hard and fast and losing control of the club. So if that's the case, I can go ahead and get rid of the glove and have good feel and touch with my hands. A lot of players, they show up chipping and pitching and putting with me and they still got their glove on. Get that glove off, take it off between shots especially so it doesn't get sweaty and you'll find you'll have it right for full swings and have touch for short shots. Now, stay tuned, we got some more great stuff coming up in the Golf Kingdom, including a visit to the Golf Kingdom Library. We'll be back faster than one swing and one putt. Alexa, open Golf Kingdom. Welcome to Golf Kingdom. Here's your golf tip of the day. Welcome to the Golf Kingdom. I am your host, Rob Strano, and here is today's Pro Pointer. Alexa, stop. 
If you want more pro pointers from me via your Amazon enabled skill at the Golf Kingdom, be sure to go there and enable it. Every day I give you a new tip free with your Amazon enabled device. So enable the Golf Kingdom and you'll get a tip from me, your host Rob Strano, every day. Wow, this book has got some great stuff in it, some great pictures. This would be an awesome GK Library segment. Hey there, folks. Yeah, I just pulled this book off the shelf over here. It is Tiger Woods' How I Play Golf. I think we'll use this in our library segment. Come on, let's check it out. Well, here's our book, How I Play Golf by Tiger Woods. Leah, look at that smiling face, one of the greatest players of all time. This is one of the greatest books. If this is in your library, it should be in your library. It's got some awesome pictures in it, as well as descriptions from one of the best players in the game. But we're gonna focus in on two things here that he talks about in the book. Let's go to our first image here. And we're gonna look at this backswing loaded position he gets in. Yes, this backswing where you can see his lead shoulder is stretched way away from his lead foot. This is this move into the trail side that we're trying to get to that we talk about all the time. It looks like all the moves we make where we're shifting this way to throw a ball or we're gonna throw a bucket of water, he's just taking himself, this upper half, and he has stretched it over here. The head has to move. If you can get rid of the thought of keeping your head still, you can do this just like Tiger does. But if you keep your head still, if I lock my head in place, I can't get this shoulder away from that foot. This shoulder's gotta get away from this foot like I'm stretching a rubber band way over there. I'm gonna try to stretch it way over there and get in this position. Great picture from the book and a great place to get to in the backswing if you can stretch it on over there, get loaded over there, then you can really go forward and go get it and get some power. So if you're looking for power, that's a great spot to get to. Now. Next picture, let's look at this. It's a setup picture of Tiger. And what you see is his upper body and lower body look very athletically stacked over each other. He doesn't look too far bent over this way. He doesn't look too straight up and down. He looks athletic like he, be, he could be playing any other sport. So look at me standing next to him. We look pretty much the same, but it's like any other sport. I'm receiving a serve in tennis. I'm linebacker in football. All these athletic positions go right to this stacked position he's in. Now, let me show you an image from a player I gave a lesson to recently to show you the counter indicator of this. So what you see here is look at this one. You can see in this setup, way too bent over, too much spine angle, and in this one, too straight up and down. Okay, not, not sorry, not too straight up and down, perfectly athletic and up and down. Right there, those are perfect. Now, here's your checkpoint. Check this out, the yellow line. You can see that yellow line is way out over his toes, and this one over here comes right down through the tips of his knees and his toes. So great checkpoints from these two images that match up with Tiger's book. Jump out and get that, and you'll find some great stuff in there in your library to help your game. And thanks for joining me again as I travel Europe, and where in the world is Rob? Right now I'm in a really cool place. I am at the Roman Coliseum, which dates back to like forever. They used to have all kinds of cool competitions in here. They had animal games, gladiator competitions. It was a really, really cool battleground way back in the Roman era. Right now, with your golf game, you're trying to figure out how to battle your own things in the golf course. I'm gonna give you two things gonna help you with your battles on the course. Right now, number one, the gladiators, when they battled here, some of them didn't make it. You've gotta to learn to bury your dead, just like they did, with your golf game. So what does bury your dead mean? Bear your dead means after you hit a bad shot on the golf course, when you get done, don't go practice your full swing. Go practice the shot that you had trouble with on the course. Go bury your dead. So if you hit a bad chip shot, go hit 60 of the same chip shots. Bury that one bad one under 60 good ones and you'll forget the bad one. Second thing I want you to do is figure out how to, after a shot, get over it come up with a distraction. So when the gladiators got done in their battles, they had to find a way to forget about their battle and go off normal life. I want you to figure out after a shot, how can you distract yourself? 
hum your favorite tune, think about something funny, engage your group in a different conversation, but get away from what just happened and move on to the next shot. That way, you're kind of forgetting the bad thing that just happened and moving on to your next battle or your next shot. Those two things will help you improve your game. This has kind of been a fun little tour because I'm not teaching you swing playing or simple moves or different moves your swing. Sometimes I'm going deeper into the game to help you out. So today, two things. Number one, bury your dead. Go practice something that you did wrong. Number two, come up with a distraction. Figure out something different to do after a bad shot to help you move on to play the next good one. All right, it's guest time, and we've got a great one. Check it out. It's our buddy from Aimpoint Golf, Mark Sweeney. Mark is one of the foremost green reading experts on the planet via Aimpoint Golf, and a great putting coach, and a great guy. And he's always got something awesome for putting. What do you got, Mark? Hey, Rob. Thanks for having me on Golf Kingdom. Uh, yeah, one thing that when we talk about the importance of putting, if we look at the whole game of golf, uh, I like to think about it in terms of opportunities and conversions. So opportunities are how many uh, approaches do you have 20 feet or closer to the green? So, sorry, to the pin. So you, so any putt inside 20 feet is really where your birdies come from. And the key is you've got to convert those four birdies. You have to make those putts. Um, PGA Tour winners convert at about 70% rate for putts inside 20 feet, which sounds like an awful lot, but that's actually what they're doing. PGA Tour average for all putts inside 20 feet is about 60%. Um, when you go down to college level, it drops to about 40%, and then at junior level, it drops to 30 to 40%. So as the player um, progresses through their development of golf, their conversion rates get higher and higher and higher. Um, a mistake a lot of younger golfers make is that they are worried so much about ball striking, where they're actually hitting the ball pretty well, but they're not spending enough time learning how to convert those, those opportunities into birdies. Um, you can get away with it at a junior level, not converting at a super high rate, but you cannot get through college golf without, without getting 50% or higher. So that's really kind of that 10 to 20 foot range. We need to learn how to read it accurately and, and have a good line and good speed. Otherwise, they're, they're not going to go in. Um, it's less important, less of an issue on the really short putts, but it's really that 10 to 20 foot ring where people are starting to convert at a very high rate at, at pro levels that they're not doing at junior levels. Well, that's awesome stuff from Mark Sweeney at Aimpoint Golf. Let's recap that because we got some really good nuggets here. Check it out. What he said was they convert 70% of all putts inside of 20 feet. Not, not convert all 20 footers. All putts, 70%. So it could be 2 feet, 4 feet, 10 feet, 6 feet, a tap in, okay? 70% of all putts inside of 20 feet not all 20 footers. Last piece, check this out, okay? PJ Tour average proximity is 30 feet or greater on all greens hit. So they hit it outside of 30 feet, and then they only hit 60% of their shots inside of 20 feet from around 100 yards. So this 20 foot number, they're not inside it very often, so a lot of those putts are lags that are tap-ins or two and three footers. So don't get this thought in your head, you gotta make a bunch of 20 footers. You've gotta convert 70% of putts inside 20 feet. Now stay tuned, we got some more great stuff coming up back here in the Golf Kingdom. Well, you want some great stuff, more secrets, tips to help your game? I need you to download the Golf Kingdom app. Yeah, go to your app store, download the app. Here you have daily tips from me. You've got all the shows right here in the show library, and then all the segments are broken out so you can get everything to help your game in full swing, chipping, putting. Go to your app store, get the Golf Kingdom app, try the seven day free trial, and I guarantee you'll find all kinds of great stuff to help your game. Okay, it's swing analysis time. I love looking at golf swings and especially Babes who bomb it. Yes, there's some babes out there that hit it like this. They bomb it like it's been fired out of a cannon and they just blow it up. Heck, I just got blown up, but they blow up the golf ball and they can really, really rip it. I think I just got blown up here on set and it's gonna, wait, what's, what's this cannon we got going on here? What? No, we're not shooting a guy out of a cannon. Get him back in there. No, no, we're talking about hitting the ball like it's coming out of a cannon. And first babe we're looking at here, this is Paige. And you know what? The key we want to focus on here to help you get more power, more speed, and to bomb it is look at how much she's turned her hips here. The hips have turned a bunch. We've got to get this trail hip 
turning deep in the backswing. When you swing back, if I'm the coach looking at it from this camera angle, show me your belt buckle as you swing back. Get this belt buckle turned. I'm trying to get my Oakley belt buckle turned so it's looking at the camera. This will help get this trail hip back and give you enough turn and wind into the backswing. That way on the downswing, once you've wound these hips up, it helps you wound, wind up the shoulders. You can then get your rear end into it and get through the shot. Now, we're going to hit play in one second. Watch her get through it with her lower body, get her rear end into it, and she can bomb it. Ready? One, two, three, go. Watch that. Boom. She rips it right on through. Now, here's Blair. Blair, once again, different angle, but you're going to see the same thing. You can see the hips have wound up a ton. When the hips wind up a ton, this lead knee will come back inwards here. The knee comes here, and the hips wind up a bunch. And with this wind, now you can unwind. And what's the key phrase here? Get your rear end into it. Yeah, so you can see she's got a ton of hip turn here. She's got the hips loaded. That trail hip has moved back a lot. And you can do this in your mirror at home, just like you're watching me do it. Get in your mirror, cross your arms, get that hip turned, get it wound, then stretch your arms out. Get this feeling of winding. You can see how that lead knee comes in. And then from there, you can feel how tightly you're wound. And what happens? That unwinding wants to snap and get you going. And that's where that power comes from. Or it's one of the power sources you can seek to access to gain it. And we're going to watch Blair in three, two, one, go right through. Bang, look at her rip the hips through, get turned through, all the way through, big finish. So key takeaway here, belt buckle. If you're looking in the mirror this way, turn till you can see your belt buckle. If you have to move your lead foot to do it, let your lead foot come loose to get that hip turn. Whatever works for you to get your hips loaded so you can slam them through and hit that golf ball like it's being fired out of a cannon. It's time for a little putting service announcement. Yeah, the PSA to help you putt better. And if you remember, I grew up with a putting green in my backyard. In fact, check this picture out. Here's me on the green when I'm 11, couple trophies, and there's the green I grew up on. Now, my buddy David Ogren, who's also a tour player and won the PGA Tour, has an interesting thought about putting. Check out this. And then I was out at the golf course one day, 11 o'clock in the, in the morning, mind you, and there's this kid putting and he's putting, and I sat there and watched him. This kid's gone on to play D1 golf, and it got me thinking about me and how I kind of got good. And I love to putt. I would putt and putt and putt and putt. And so now as I'm looking around town, trying to find that one person, I'm looking for the one kid that likes to go out there and putt. That's it. Gotta love the chip and putt, especially putt. Yeah, that kid in town that's always on the putting green, that's the one you want. Awesome stuff from David Ogren there. And let's talk about ways to practice putting because I could practice all day, every day on the green. I just love to putt. It's like shooting a basketball. I love making jump shots. I love making putts. Two simple drills that I never see anybody practicing on my home green at the course or my academy is. Line up golf balls two feet, three, four, five, six feet away from the hole, and practice just making them in a row. Boom, just make one, then go to the next one, get set up, practice making that one, go to the next one, do it until you can make all of these in a row. Boom, right to six feet. Then put the balls in a circle around the cup. You probably got a bunch of golf balls in your bag. Line them up in a circle and just keep going in a circle around the, the cup. I play makes, so if I make it, I throw it out, and I go until I've made them all. Just keep going into a circle until you've made all the putts in the green, and I'll probably translate to more putts made on the course. Well, it's a fun time to rise. Yeah, it's Cartoon Rob. I probably need my own cartoon name, but we'll get to that some other time. Let's talk about how you can be your own cartoon character, because cartoons are kind of made up, the stories are made up, and you can do that with your golf game and with life. So when you go play and you're your cartoon character on the course, make your story one of being courageous and confident on the course. Go do that, play that way, hit shots that way, and no matter what happens, just stick with that plan. Also, in life, Make up your own cartoon story. Yeah, reach for the stars. Be courageous, confident, believe in yourself. Either way, it's your cartoon. You go write your own story. You go be the best you can, whether you're on the golf course or living your own life. 
no matter what you choose it to be. Well, thanks for joining us for a great 4th of July episode here. Let's recap what we did in our strand notes. First off, in the build it segment, I talked about how to make the club face look square. If the toe looks turned into you and the face looks closed, it's probably square due to the optical illusion of how the club is built. Second thing is in the Golf Kingdom Library, we looked at Tiger Woods' book and we learned how important an athletic setup is in order to hit good golf shots. Yeah, don't get too bent over, I showed you. Last thing was in Babes Who Bombed It, we talked about how important it is to get our hips turned, get that back hip turned so that you can get some more power in the downswing. Now, to connect with us on social media, go out there. The Golf Kingdom is everywhere. You can find us on all the social media platforms, but two most important things you can do are download the Golf Kingdom app. Yes, there's a daily feed there where I put all kinds of great stuff to help your game, and you have all the shows, and you have all the clips, as well as equipment discounts to help your game. Lastly, be sure if you have an Alexa device, enable the Golf Kingdom skill. Yes, you can get a free audio tip from me, your host, Rob Strano, every day. Something to help your game right there on your Alexa device. Thanks again for joining us in a special 4th of July Golf Kingdom. When I was your age, I was just like you, fascinated by stars. <sighs> but now I get to search for life in the universe. And who knows, maybe life is looking for us too. So we're like aliens to them? Yeah. Does anyone want to be a scientist now? I do. Awesome, we need more girls in STEM. Maybe we can find aliens.